Well, the American dream of owning a home is becoming more attractive to millennials, despite economic headwinds out of their control from inflation to soaring home, home prices. Millennials now make up the largest share of home buyers in the U.S. According to data released by the National Association of Realtors, 43% of all U.S. home buyers were millennials. That's up from 37% last year. However, 24% of millennials were worried about saving for a down payment and lived with friends and family, while 29% received help for a down payment in the form of a gift or a loan from a friend or family member. Rogers Healy is a veteran of the Dallas real estate market and is the owner and CEO of the Rogers Healy Companies. Thank you for being here today. So we want to be clear at first about who we're talking about. We are both yes. millennials in our early 30s. <laughs> uh, so we're talking about people typically born sometime between the mid 1980s and mid 1990s. Uh, that being said, neither of us are we're owners, not, you know. <laughs> uh, despite the growth of millennials buying homes. So why? Do millennials seem to have more hurdles than any other groups when it comes to buying homes? We got to get you a house today, so let's 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 connect after the after the segment. Um, <laughs> but no, I, I think it's a lot of reasons. I, I I think that historically millennials are you know spenders, right? And I think that statistically that kind of doesn't really work when you're trying to have a down payment of 10 to 20 percent for your first property. And I think that what happened is the pandemic really shifted a lot of things with priorities. One of them is people wanted the American dream. So I think, yeah, we have still 51 percent of renters in the countries. 51 percent of millennials are still renting, which means obviously we still got some work to do. But I think a lot of things have shifted. And I think one of those reasons is millennials technically are born after 1981. A lot of them are starting to get married. A lot of them are starting to have children, which means they need more room. So the conveniences of life have shifted dramatically, but still there is a crossroad with the amount of money they have to put down as a down payment, which is why they're having people like their parents help them out. But it just gives them, you know, a, a reason to go and make an investment sooner than later. So I want to kind of follow up with exactly what you just said at the end there. Uh, millennials, they're getting help, you know, from friends or family. So what influence have those third parties had on the home buying process? Uh, a, a really strong one. And, yeah. and again, I think that if you really dial it back and think logically, which is my preference, a lot of these parents that are giving a down payment for their, for their kids to buy a home are parents that still have their kids living at home. So it's mm. probably a sanity fee, you know? So <laughs> I, I think that it, it, it really makes sense. And in places like Dallas or Austin or Nashville, where these kids want to actually live there forever, it's a great investment for the parents as well, especially if they're actually on the mortgage, on the loan, on the contract, because these places are appreciating at historic numbers with no end in sight because there are so many millennials even turning 40 every year. So, you know, we, we've got a very safe, um, you know, journey ahead, but it, it definitely makes sense. But we are seeing parents contribute, even if it's a taxable number, you know, you, you can only give so much money per year per, per child. But it still makes sense for them. And, and I think that because of that, we have a really, really safe, you know, tenure ahead. Yeah. Now, so data shows that millennials are starting their families later, uh, have been renting for an average of six years. Uh, so what has that yeah. had an impact when it comes to home buying decisions and the housing market? Just that fact that those life choices like getting married and having children, a bigger family are just happening later. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense. And, and again, I, I remember when I was in my early 20s, there was a term called the $30,000 millionaire, right? And it was someone who was making, you know, entry level pay, but they were spending all of their money. And I think that, again, going back to the pandemic, it really reset everything. And it gave us that desire to have a leave it to beaver, you know, just Norman Rockwell kind of life. So I, I think that it's happening later. And ironically, my wife and I are on a thing called our baby moon right now out of Dallas, which I'll be 42 when I have my first child. I think that that really is kind of socially accepted now. And it's not just because I'm living it, but we also moved six months ago and we're preparing for these things that just seem to be kind of happening really quickly where, you know, life doesn't stop for you. And I think when people realize this, the American dream of owning a home is never going to change. But what's going to happen because of affordability, you know, just doing this is people are going to move to neighborhoods they didn't really dream about. But because of that, they're going to live there only for a couple, three years. And it's going to keep these cycles of moving really, really, you know, healthy. And I, and I think because of that, the real estate market's going to stay safe. And people like me that are in real estate all across the world and all across the country, we've got job security.
Well, first, congratulations on your baby moon. That is so exciting. Um, But this gives me a little bit more hope because I'm going through this whole conversation with my husband now, just, uh, you know, thinking about the future and rent prices obviously increasing and trying to decide, well, what is the threshold when rent goes up 300 or 400 or 500? Um, So there's a lot of anxiety there. Um, But Rogers Healy, thank you so much for joining us. Always good to see you. My pleasure. Thank you. Have a good day.